What's up guys, it's Mark again and welcome back to Swamp and Stomp. So as you guys know, we are just about a week away from season opening down in South Florida and we've been crazy busy during this off season. And we've got a bunch of content that we haven't really shown you guys. So in this video, we're gonna kind of bounce around from a few different things that have been happening. Some of those things include some of the events that we've been putting on during the off season. Um, the first one we're gonna take a look at is gonna be our uh, Saddle Hunter 3D Archery Tournament and Demo Day that we put together. Um, and then we're gonna jump over to another event that we put on, which is our scouting workshop that we did together with Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. Um, and then finally, we're gonna get into some scouting stuff um, that we've been doing on some public land, show you guys some of the stuff that we found, some of the bucks we've got on camera, and some of the things that we are so excited for during this season. Um, really quick, just wanna make a quick shout out to all the companies that donated gear for the Saddle Hunter tournament that we put on. We ended up giving away over 10 saddles and platforms and all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, pretty much every company uh, that is anything in the saddle hunting world donated gear. Uh, so um, Cruiser, Latitude, um, Wood Hunting Saddles, Eastern Woods Outdoors, uh, Out on a Limb, uh, Buzzard Roost, um, I can't even think of them all, Two Boar Saddles, um, I know I'm missing some, uh, I apologize to you guys, but thank you to everybody that sent gear uh, for that demo day and allowed us to raffle off those prizes. And thank you to everybody that came to the event. We're definitely gonna make sure that we do it next time. So make sure you're following us on Facebook. That's where we post everything about our events. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll see you guys at one of our events next year. So let's take a look at that event real quick. Um, and then we're gonna jump into the rest of this video. A big deer and he didn't go 30 yards oh my god <laughs> that's the first buck i've ever shot Woo! what a rush money that deer is dead tagged out baby <laughs> you shot one yeah hell yeah dude. i saw him go what? down We're out here in Sebring, and we are at the 3D archery shoot that we put together. But this one's special. We're shooting from a saddle. What do you guys think of the event? Loving it, loving it, loving it. It's nice. You shooting good? Challenging. Yeah? We are doing pretty good. Yeah, I'm sure you guys are. You guys are good archers. Stop making these damn targets move. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe learn to shoot a little better. Anyway, hopefully you guys can join us next year. Uh, it's been awesome so far. We've got a ton of people here and uh, everybody's learning how to shoot out of a saddle and uh, really putting their skills to the test, trying to figure out the best ways to position yourself to take some funky shots. Is this your uh, first time being in a saddle? Yes. Yeah? Have you, sh you guys already shot a different target? Or is no, this the first one? No, this is the first, first one. one. This is gonna be your first shot out of a saddle? Yes. Oh, somebody's down there already. Yeah, you could make these shots a little easier. <laughs> yeah, no, you got to put it on him for sure. All right, Robbie. Let's see what you got, Mr. Swamp and Stomp. I can't even see the target through here. You hit it though. That's a heart shot. It's low. Yeah. I think that's an eight. Just remember, don't look at the twig. Uh oh, I lost that arrow. Yeah, we don't even need the dog for that one. Where did it go? It hit the twig. <laughs> did it really? It literally hit the twig? Oh no. We're checking it out. <laughs> So the whole point of this is to simulate the bow hunt. So we're trying to put people into like weird positions uh, so that you can really 
understand what a saddle allows you to do. And here's an example of a handsome devil shooting out of a saddle. And he missed. Did you smoke it? Well, it's a dead animal. <laughs> That's all that matters. It yeah. looks like a bad shot. That's probably a 10. That's a 10 for sure. That could be a 12. A Let me fire off some questions at you. Go ahead, sir. Are you enjoying yourself? Having a blast. Making have you, great things happen. Have you uh, tried out all those uh, demo saddles we had? No, I ain't tried them out yet. No. You haven't tried them? Well, you gotta no. try them before you leave. And then I wanna know what your favorite one is. How about you, have you tried them out? What's that? All the demos? Oh yeah. What's I your favorite? I like the wood. Yeah, I bet yeah, you like I think, wood. I think, yeah, oh yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna hit that 12 ring? No. <laughs> to win that JX3? John, don't make me go break out the boat. It's not even sighted in and show you up. Yeah. Got a good chance of winning that. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> That looks good. So we just pulling. Yeah, there's only one twelve. So. Let's, let's say what, what you're winning. So, yes, go ahead. so we have four different saddles and gear hangers to choose from. So first place is going to pick first, mm. then second, third. And then we also have our free uh, saddle. Great. Awesome. All right. We'll talk no more. We're going to get down to business. First place for this tournament was Shaw. Nice. Yeah. Shaw yeah. and Shaw's got a 104, so he's got four runs. <laughs> All right. All right, so the saddles you can choose from, we have the Arrow Hunter Strike, we've got the Wood uh, Swamp and Stomp Camo uh, Deluxe Saddle, and then we have the uh, Buzzard Roost Dual Panel right here, and the, look, the Method Classic Two. You're gonna, just, you're gonna have to show it off, Danny. I'll pick this one. I'll be the model. <laughs> Look at that awesome stick there. That's the ultimate stick. It is ultimate. Yeah, this thing's pretty sweet. Alright, go ahead and pick one out of there. You can fold it up and all that. Alright, Jax. There's a name. It's like Cam. Is that Cam? 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 I'm not looking. Alternator. He's falling for the deep. Two one two. Oh, there's a name on the back. Ainsley. Do you want a two step or a three step? I think this is the three step. It rolls up in this little pouch. There you go. Alright guys, that's all we got for you today. We had a great time. If you missed it, make sure that you're following us on Facebook because that's where we put all of our events. And when we do this thing next year, it's going to be bigger, badder, and better. We're going to have more stuff. We're going to have more targets. We're going to have everything. Make sure that you're there. And subscribe, and like, and comment, and tell your friends about this. <laughs> So the next event we're gonna look at is going to be the scouting event that we put together with Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. And I wanna give a shout out to Hunt Stand. Um, as you guys know, Hunt Stand has been sponsoring us for a really long time. And uh, if you wanna save a little bit of money to get one of their memberships, you can use the code that's down in the description. But for this particular event, they actually gave um, a free year long membership to every person that came. So if you missed out on that, uh, make sure that you come next year. I'm sure we're going to make the same thing happen again. Um, and again, we had a bunch of people show up to this event. It was it was a great success, and we really enjoyed ourselves. So hopefully, we'll see you guys next year. Uh, thank you guys for coming out this morning. This is awesome. Um, as some of you know, we did this last year, and it was a great success, and uh, a lot of people got a lot out of this. So, um, you know, 
some of you guys may know my YouTube channel, which I started basically to try to teach people how to hunt in Florida. But one of the things that I've always struggled with with those videos is trying to teach people how to scout. So came up with the idea to do this event last year, teamed up with uh, Backcountry Hunters and Anglers to make it happen. And uh, it's just so much easier to teach you guys about what we look for when we're out in the woods and we have it here in person. So, um, we're going to split you guys up, or I've already kind of made a list here. We're going to split you guys up into three different groups. Each group is going to have two experienced hunters to, to show you the way. Um, when they get out there, they'll kind of show you what kind of habitat they're looking for. Um, you know, what that might look like if you were to be looking on a map. Um, and then get out there and try and figure out, you know, where the deer are hanging out, what kind of sign they're leaving behind it how you might set up on it, you know, kind of tell you their strategy that they use to be successful with wood. So, so uh, I think that's it. The tip of the toe will be more like this, whereas the deer will be like pointed, if, if that makes sense. Like the outside of the track is like that for a deer and like this for a hog. And especially if you're finding uh, boar tracks, boars spend a lot of time just like roaming. Uh, by themselves walking a lot and the tips of their um, their hooves like start getting worn down so they get more and more um, stumped. Like it would be longer and like only the tip would be rounded off whereas like these are like rounded completely like two hot dogs like they were saying. <laughs> so and then some of this over here is a little fresher but still older you can tell because it has those raindrop that pitter patter yeah. pattern in there. Um, and then this stuff right here, this is all really fresh. So you can you can see there's tracks in it. They've been standing in there. And like this is what I was talking about when the sand still looks powdery. It's like a coffee cake. Yeah. So yeah, there's nothing on top like this, of this is, this right here is like where something rooted probably last night or the day before. This is a little bit older. Again, there's still some pine needles in there and stuff. Um, and then, you know, back there, you can see that was rooted up probably a month ago or longer. So um, when I'm scouting before season, a lot of times I'm looking for pinch points. And when I say pinch point, I mean, find a place where there's a semi hard barrier. Um, you know, it can be deep water uh, or thick trees like this, um, where they're kind of funneled into a tight pinch point. And so this is a perfect example of that. We've got this prairie out here. There's lots of food out there. They can munch out. And if they want to get to the other side of this, uh, this cypress, if you look on the map, this cypress is like a long, like, creek. There's usually a creek running through the middle of these things. And um, So instead of them walking through the cypress, where there's obviously a lot more potential to get ambushed by an alligator or any other predator because they can't see as far, They'll walk these open trails. So pre-season, these are the kinds of places I'll put a camera. Because, well, there, there's two things about that. One, it's where I think the deer are going to be walking. And two, uh, I want to be able to get to my camera without putting my scent all up in that thick stuff. Um, and I can walk in here really easily, you know, not really touch anything, grab that card out of the camera and check it without, like, stinking up the area. And the deer know that you've been hanging out. As soon as they know you're hanging out, they're going to start acting pressured. They're going to start walking those other trails. Um, so you want to try and minimize the amount of pressure that you put on an area, especially before you can actually shoot at an animal. Yeah, we got a video. We got some macaroni uh, heating up here. We got sausage, beer sausages, we got chicken, we got chicken, we got brisket over there, we got some cornbread, we got a whole lot of people in a good event. And one last announcement that I want to make before we jump into the scouting stuff. Uh, if you guys don't know about it yet, we just launched our new 
uh, high pine camo. Well, I guess it's not completely new. We've had the shirts for a little while, but we finally got pants um, and a face mask. We got the full outfit. Um, and if you're interested in getting that, you can get it on our website at swampandstompllc.com. There is a link down in the description. Um, we'd really appreciate it if you'd support our little venture. It's been kind of crazy how many people have been ordering it. Um, and we're really excited to see uh, some of the harvests that people get this season using our camo line. So go check that out. And uh, here we're going to show you some of the scouting that we've been doing down in South Florida. All right, y'all. We're heading in to check some cameras that have been soaking for two weeks. This particular camera, I'm probably going to remove it just because I have a feeling this area is going to get a lot of pressure. Even if there's something good on it, I'm still pulling it because a lot of people like to take cameras. Fingers crossed that this one's not gone already. But yeah, regardless of even if there's some quality deer on it. Um, there's a deer right there. Just. Damn. Didn't see me, didn't blow. I'm gonna cut the camera. Alright. So I just checked this camera. That I thought there was gonna be more deer on it, to be honest. Camera's there. Get this oak tree. It looked like it was gonna start dropping. So I put a mosh scrape on there. I got a little six point coming through, but uh, yeah, I'm pulling this camera right. I think I can find a better area. I just assumed that this tree was gonna be a food source, but it seems like it's all over the place. Some of them are growing, and then so definitely. Uh, if I wanted to leave this camera here, this could be a, f a feeding spot. But I already got a guy on camera. Thank you for not touching my camera. But uh, yeah, that's it. One doe, one buck. All right, we're on to camera number two. I gotta cross a pretty bad swamp here, but it should be about waist deep, so I'm hoping that keeps a lot of people out. Alright, well, after quite a few miles, I'm finally starting to see some freaking rubs, some fresh rubs. It ain't nothing fancy, but like three that are a little older yeah, on these same size pines so I'm not putting a camera on it yet I'm gonna do a loop check my camera and then just walk this back and put a camera wherever the best spot is so I'll have two in the same vicinity and that's in my opinion running a couple cheap cameras within you know a little area gives you a better idea of actually how these deer are moving you can have one of the expensive cell cameras, which I use, but one camera in one spot is not going to tell you where they're moving. They're pretty limited on confidence in your setup. And I set up two or three cameras in one area, and I get them going boom, boom, boom. I know that I can set up anywhere in that line. Or hopefully line. Sometimes just a general area. And have a good good access it gives, you, it gives you more options for your access and your work by knowing actually how he's using that area all right boys we're on them another good rope fresh probably five rubs on the edge of this hearing this is a nice rope right here I don't know how well the camera's picking that up, but it's good. All right, we got the tactic game set up. Nice rub. Nice rub. Let's get out of here. All right. <clears throat> last camera countdown. Not last camera. Uh, second to last camera. I got one more. Uh, not as. I mean, I didn't expect a whole lot leaving the camera there because I got a nice little eight point on there. Probably. Uh, I don't know, only three and a half. If he's two, he's got some genetics. Uh, basket rack inside the ears, tall, tight, pencil. It's, you know, not too much mass. 
Uh, if he walked out, he'd get an arrow though, for sure. All right, guys. So I um <clears throat> I checked all three of my cameras. So the first spot that I put a camera on that rub with the scrape, it uh, didn't have any deer on it over the past two weeks. So it seems like that's an old scrape they're not using anymore. But the other two scrapes that I put a camera on, um, there's there's a few nice bucks. I haven't gone through all the pictures yet, but there's a few nice bucks on there. Um, so I pulled the other camera that didn't have any deer and I uh, came back to where th these um, these other cameras are. And I'm uh, just going, there's like a tree edge that those are set up on. So I'm about half a mile from that. I've just been following the, the game trails going in a different direction. So I'm just walking through this area a little north of where I uh, found those other bucks. And um, I'm starting to find rubs and beds all through this area. Uh, look at the size of this rub right here. This thing's a beauty. This is a big buck that made this. Check it out. There's, there's another rub just like that where I left my bike. So there's a bunch of rubs in here, there's beds. And basically all I'm doing is I'm, I'm just walking through right now and I'm dropping pins on hunt stand um, so that when I get done scouting through this, I can kind of get an idea of like where the bucks feel comfortable because generally speaking, if they're hitting those rubs, they're probably like living close by. I think if I get a cluster of them, it'll help me kind of triangulate where they're hanging out. So it's just another way that you can use hunt stand to figure out where the deer are. And as you can see, this whole area, it's like grassy. There's a lot of beauty berry. This stuff right here, this is called beauty berry. See how it's on? It's like a purple berry. The deer love this stuff and it's all over the place. So it seems like the deer are bedding back in here. And it seems like there's a pretty big buck that's hanging out back here. So I'm gonna try and find a scrape in this area. So I'll have a second spot I can hunt. What I really like would like to do is find a spot that I can hunt on a different wind. So if the wind's blowing, you know, from the east, um, that I can hunt one spot. And if it's blowing from the west, I can hunt another spot. So there's some nice pines back here. So I'm, I'm gonna see if uh, these rubs continue back in there. See if I can find a good spot that I could set up on. Damn it. I, I knew I was getting close. I just bumped up two bucks. One smaller one, uh, like a spike and a bigger one. And I could see I bumped him off of a scrape and a rub right up here. So I'm gonna put a camera on there. I'm gonna get the hell out of here. I just picked out a tree back here that I could totally hunt. So that'll do. Look at that rub. There's an angry buck in here. All right, y'all, thanks for watching this video. The next video that you guys see should be, maybe, one with a buck down. I don't know, uh, it's possible. Good luck to everybody this season. Hopefully you guys have a great one and we're super excited to get our started as well.